Our journey starts in northern Taiwan in the small town of Roifang. It's a small, iconic town known for being an embarking point to the mountainous coal mining villages of Pingxi, this regional area. And it also has some epic karaoke nights. If you happen to book an Airbnb there, you might find out your host is just randomly inviting you to his own personal karaoke show. This year, Roy Fong offered a cheap 30 NTV bus journey to Pingxi. So we took advantage of that, and after clearing the traditional COVID checkpoints, we're on our way to see the Sky Lantern Festival. And while I've never seen anyone use seat belts on buses in Taiwan, it was nice to know the government actually cared. Our bus headed up a winding mountain path, and there were these super slick roads from all the rain. And rain's kind of a bother, especially during an outdoor festival where you have flaming paper bags going into the sky. But after the record drought of 2021, we collectively promised in Taiwan to never complain again about rain. So we were like, bring it, yeah, rain, yeah, flood us, it's great. The Sky Lantern Festival has a history that reaches far back into the annals of time, like a couple hundred years. Oral tradition from the elders of this region tells us that at the beginning of the Qing Dynasty, winter was incredibly dangerous. Government and military forces were spread really thin and they couldn't protect those who lived and worked in rural areas like these mountainous villages. So bandits would often attack villages in Shifun and the villagers there looking for refuge would flee deep into the mountains. So after harvest, when the solstice came, most able-bodied men would stay in the villages and ride out the harshness of winter. And eventually, as winter gave way to spring and the danger passed, those who remained in the village would release sky lanterns. And that told those in the mountains that it's safe to come back home now and they don't have to worry about bandits murdering them in their sleep. Since this originally happened around the time of the Lantern Festival, Shifun began a tradition of releasing lanterns on the 15th day of the first lunar month to report peace. And they celebrated this tradition for hundreds of years. Fast forward to the 90s and Taiwan decided that to spread tradition and folklore, they would celebrate the more traditional religious lantern festival with a multi-week event all throughout Taiwan. And that meant giant lanterns, outrageous amounts of explosions, and Shifun's tradition of sky lanterns fit in perfectly with what they were trying to do. So, Em's not feeling well today, so now it's just the two of us. In the rain, going to see some lanterns. I, uh, I read a vlog today that said uh, there's 12 taboos for lantern festival. Number five was to avoid dreary places. So, uh, let's, we just, went out into... let's just look at this for a second. It's a lot of green. It's lively. Lively green. <laughs> oh, dreary. I didn't know there was taboos for Lantern Festival. You know, sometimes I don't know if they actually are real or if it's just people on the internet who are like, I gotta write a listicle. Real. I've never heard of that. Yeah. It said don't you cut your hair too, but it's like, I don't know, or the lanterns will get you. <laughs> ghost month, I get okay. it. There's ghosts. The lanterns do come down. So. <laughs> Lanterns getting you can actually be a true fear. Oh, Lord, 500 feet into the sky, and it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now, and the flame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mass. All the humanity and all the fans just screaming around it. I told you. Normally, our journey to the Lantern Festival would have us arriving to this massive crowd at the entrance to the town of Shifun, where we'd walk through these old streets and there'd be a railroad tracks and that would lead us to the Pingxi Lantern Square. But this year, the bus took a different route than usual and we ended up kind of on the outskirts of the town. And after a brisk walk, we arrived ahead of the old coal mining town. The downside being that all the amazing B-roll of filming us launching our own lanterns in this little sweet, quaint town, walking through a mountain village was replaced with Jake's behind me filming. Okay, and some footage of the medical checks. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just walking forward. But there was a really cool giant lantern. So our journey wasn't exactly harrowing, but the rain didn't stop. And nothing's worse than trying to film in a crowd of people while they hit you with umbrellas, while you're also holding several thousand dollars worth of camera equipment, trying not to get that soaked. We definitely should have bought ponchos for this, but we didn't. 2022 is markedly different than years past. The amount of lanterns was a lot less than usual and the crowds were tiny compared to what I had seen in the past. But it did not deter a single photographer. Like seriously, every event we go to, there's people with lenses and cameras that cost tens of thousands of dollars. 
And I kind of wonder if it's just a hobby for them because there can't honestly be that many newspapers or YouTube channels needing the same picture but I guess we do the same thing. So this year they planned seven volleys and groups of people came into a large center square and then they would write wishes, prayers, and dreams on the lanterns. And hopefully they would time the release to be around the same moment. This didn't always work out for the crowds though. Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? And in between, we would have these hilariously odd performances followed by another volley. Unlike most festivals in Taiwan, while there's religious connections and some undertones, the Sky Lantern Festival is a lot more cultural and traditional, which is kind of unique as Christians often have to navigate how involved they can be during religious events in Taiwan, and that's one of the questions. Is this something where a Christian can participate or not participate in? The event might be dedicated or oriented towards a specific god. Like this year, I know a lot of the prayers were to end the pandemic, but Ultimately, after a lot of research, I've seen that the release of a sky lantern isn't necessarily connected with an act of worship unless a person decides to worship a god through that act. And as the night goes on, the sky becomes lit with gorgeous volleys of brilliant light. And it brings me back in time to my first sky lantern festival. I remember the first time I came to Taiwan, which was over 10 years ago now, was one of the hardest periods of my life. I'd recently lost my father figure to cancer and I lost everything I owned in this unfortunate incident where my storage unit didn't get paid for and basically everything I'd ever had since childhood was just auctioned off to some stranger. And amidst all that, I lost my best friend and some of the deepest relationships I had through circumstances that I really couldn't control. And that was really it. Like, life felt out of control. And no matter how hard I fought to get some semblance of order, it felt like life was just this long, dark, bleak winter. And I remember coming to Pingxi on a whim and just riding that bus through these whirling roads. And when I arrived, and we looked up, the sky was on fire. Just a light with hundreds of brilliant splotches of color and motion, and it was just beautiful. It was breathtaking. And like I said earlier, they're not just random sky lanterns. People wrote their prayers and their hopes and their wishes, and they sent them out into the sky perhaps hoping to find just a little bit of control in a world that's so out of control. You know, perhaps there is something in all of us, made in the image of God, that when thick, black, inky skies seem impenetrable, burns to see light conquer the darkness, to bring light to the heavens if only for a moment. But what goes up must come down, and even our best attempts fall really short. Like there's literally thousands of us gathering and hoping and wishing and praying, but our collective effort is only a short little ember in the cold night sky before darkness overcomes it again. And as I watched the lanterns rise and fall, I stood there stunned, longing and waiting for the next lights. I was just hoping they'd hold out just a little bit longer, last a little bit longer, because it was so beautiful. I started to feel this immense, unexplainable joy. And I knew that this moment was just a shadow, a fragile dying glimpse of a greater truth, that our Savior, Jesus Christ, calls himself the light of the world. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, in the midst of my darkest personal winter, when the crown was frozen and the trees are bare, I just knew everything would be alright. 
that no matter how strong the darkness is, it's never going to overcome the brilliant light of Christ, an undying light that burns forever and brings life. Because you know, there hasn't been a day in human history where the sun refused to rise, or where light didn't eventually come around and just conquer the darkness. And there hasn't been a winter that didn't eventually end, just like there's never been a spring that didn't eventually come. The light will always overcome the darkness. So it's been a lifetime since those days, and the winter is long since thawed. And I've found abundant life and carved out a little home for myself here in Taiwan. And I always find myself coming back to that place of deep joy when I watch these lanterns light up the sky and think this is just a shadow. It's just a glimpse of what the light of the world does and how the darkness cannot overcome the light of Jesus Christ. Every prayer we pray, we're begging for our redemption, and every sound we make is a window to our soul for a damper world. We call for resurrection in our winters, Lord, bring us spring. And people call this dreary. Actually, it's not dreary to me because it reminds me of Seattle, but it probably is dreary to anybody else who likes the, what's that called, the sun.